On this plate boundary, we're going to be looking at what happens when two pieces of continental crust come together. So this is a destructive plate boundary, just like the one we've looked at previously. But the difference with this one is that both of these pieces of crust here are both continental. So they're the same type of rock and they're the same thickness and the same density. So in this example, neither of these pieces of crust will go into the mantle. Um, so in this example, we've got convection currents, as you can see here, coming together and that's dragging the plates together here. In order to tell you a little bit about this boundary, I'm going to start by um, talking a little bit about what creates rock. So I want you to imagine, we've got a picture here. This is a river coming into the sea, and this is another river coming into the sea. And as you know, uh, rock, uh, rivers don't just transport water, they transport their load as well, which is all rocks and clay and mud and different types of sediment. So as our rivers here flow into the sea, they deposit their rock at the bottom of the sea in layers. So that might be, for instance, a layer of clay. And we might end up with another layer here on top of a different type of rock. And then another layer of sediment. And then another layer of sediment. And this is happening over hundreds of years. So we end up with these layers of sediment building up at the bottom of the ocean and these layers of sediment will become really compressed together and that's what makes rock. Now what you've got to imagine is that these, um, this rock um, gets compressed together as the plates push these plates together and will crumple up these layer of, layers of rock. So what you would end up with is something that would look a little bit like this. The layer would get, let's just start the layer here, the layer would get crumpled up like that and then you'd have your other rock on top and it would be crumpled like that. And then this one again would be crumpled like this because we are squeezing them. We're squeezing them together so the layers would crumple up. So you have to imagine that we've applied a force from there and we've applied a force from here and that has caused them to crumple up and that's again because of the convection currents in the mantle moving the plates together crumpling up the rock so that's our start point is how rock is formed let's have a little look at the plate boundary then and if you were to draw this as a diagram in an exam so what we have here is our two pieces let me put a line down the middle there. We have a piece of continental crust here and a piece of continental crust here. And don't forget, we need to put our arrows on the diagram to show that they are moving towards each other. So this is a destructive plate boundary. Okay, now I suggest that you get a piece of paper and you draw this diagram with me at the same time. So this is a destructive plate boundary. And as I said previously, we have a piece of continental crust moving towards a piece of continental crust. So they are moving towards each other. And that's because the, in the mantle, the convection currents are moving towards each other, just like that. OK, that's what's happening here in our mantle. And so the, the, the layers of sedimentary rock here are going to start to crumple up to make these folds just like this. It would crumple up because of the pressures being applied and we would end up with these fold mountains. Where we have a peak of the mountain, like that's a mountain peak there and that's a mountain peak there and that's a mountain peak there, we call those the anticlines. And a nice way of remembering that is that they form the letter A for anticline. So the peaks are anticlines. Okay. Um, where we have the uh, sinks, they're called the synclines. So we end up with a sink there and a peak there. Sink there, peak there. So these are the synclines and these are the anticlines. And that's really our plate boundary. So to summarise, firstly, Rivers deposit sediment okay it builds up in layers
and compresses into rock. Convection currents in the mantle move the plates together. They force upwards as they're the same density. And that creates fold mountains. So these are fold mountains and you can see they've simply been folded upwards as the plates have crushed together. The peaks are called anticlines. Spelt like that. And the troughs are called synclines. Spelt like that. Okay, so the peaks, mountain peak, and the trough is a bit coming down. So that's the trough there, and that's the peak there. Peak there, trough there. Okay. Um, last couple of things to say about this boundary. You will not get any volcanoes here. You only get mountain building because the rock is simply being squeezed together and folded upwards. There is no magma coming up through this mountain range. So they, you will not get any volcanoes here. You will get some earthquake activity because as the rock is being compressed and it's moving and the mountains are growing um, taller and taller, the um, the layers, um, you know, the layers between the different sedimentary rocks will slip and slide slightly, and that will create um, earthquakes. So recent earthquakes that we've had in places like Nepal were were triggered in this way, um, as the mountains were growing. It's like we call it their growing pains. So you will get earthquakes, but you will not get volcanoes. And these mountain ranges are growing a little bit taller every year. So a nice example for you would be the Himalayan, the Himalayan mountains. They're growing by about a centimetre each year. And that's simply because of the compressional forces squeezing them together, making them rise up that little bit taller. And that's that boundary.